Please welcome Fred Eisman. Don't, don't leave this room. <laughs> You're not allowed. We're closing the doors. Um, uh, most uh, Friday afternoons conferences wind down. We're winding up. Um, uh, no, I'm not going to sing. Um, uh, <laughs> please sing. Please sing. Um, let me introduce two great friends and two great U.S. Senators, uh, Senators Chuck Schumer and Cory Booker, who are right here. And I'm going to be very quick because they have much more pithy things to say than I do. Um, Chuck has been, uh, is, is the senior New York senator, obviously, and uh, one of the senior senators in the U.S. Senate. He has been a great, The great next Democratic steward. leader. What? The next Democratic leader. And, and the next Democratic leader. I, 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 I'm sorry. I'm just oh, helping you, Fred. Okay. I, 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 I appreciate the interruption, Corey. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and the next Democratic leader of the U.S. Senate. The... Um, the uh, he has also been a great advocate for New York City, for Moynihan Station, for uh, the gateway tunnels to the MTA, and has been a constant uh, 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 battler uh, for, for funds for New York City's uh, infrastructure. Does this mean you're rooting for the Mets? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to get out of here in a second. Uh, the, uh, uh, and Corey... There were no... I'm a Yankee fan because there were no Mets when I was a little boy. Right. Dodgers left Brooklyn when I was five, and the Mets didn't come till I was 12. The Yankees were the only team in town, and I'm loyal. The Dodgers were in Brooklyn? <laughs> Just like the Giants are in New York. <laughs> uh, hey, wait a minute. Where do the Giants go? <laughs> All right, that I'm determined. I know these guys well enough that I'm going to talk over them. 30 seconds. Okay, Corey is the ranking Democrat on the Surface Transportation Committee. And he's also been working on the criminal justice reform bill, which he's put before the, 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 the Senate, um, which is extremely important. Thank you for the one person that applauded over there. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> I'm getting the hell off this stage. Hold on. <laughs> hey, don't we get to say nice things about you? <laughs> Fred, Fred helped me transform Newark. You've been tremendous. Hey. You're good looking and you have a better haircut than me. <laughs> As you may be able to tell, um, this, the two senators do not need a moderator, um, but, uh, but I've been tasked with that, so I'm going to do my best to try to keep this conversation focused um, and uh, give them each an opportunity to talk about the gateway tunnels. And I don't think there's any argument of, with people in this room about the need for it, but if you could each maybe talk a little bit about two things uh, related. One is what are the economic impacts of, of building them? And then importantly, what are the economic impacts if we don't build it? Right. So go ahead. Senator well, uh, answer your second question. If we don't build the gateway tunnels and build them soon, it could actually cause a significant recession in the New York economy and even a recession in the whole economy. That's how important they are. There's probably no more important infrastructure project in America than these tunnels. Why do we say that? Because the tunnels are old. We know that. They're over 100 years old. But after Sandy, they became really, really troubled. The salt water got into the tunnel and tunnel beds. And experts predict that it might be between seven and 10 years and the tunnels will be gone. That gives us a very short timeline. Now, these are the only two tunnels under the Hudson. They not only prevent 300,000 New Jersey riders from getting into Manhattan, which is extremely important to both states. It's important to New York's economy and important to Jersey's economy. But it's the whole rail line from Boston to Washington which would be pretty much gone if the tunnels went under. So the sense of urgency that Corey and I are trying to light under not only New Yorkers, but the whole nation about how important these tunnels are is, is, is an extremist right now. We really have to do this and do it quickly because we don't exactly know when the tunnels will no longer function. But once they do, there is chaos, economic chaos in the Northeast. It affects states from Maine to Virginia. Senator? I just want to add uh, <clears throat> really quickly that he's not overstating the case. The Obama administration has said that this is the number one uh, project, infrastructure project in America right now. This is the busiest river crossing in all of the United States. Uh, one out of every six 
people in America live in the Northeast Corridor region. Uh, one out of every five dollars of our GDP is generated from this region. But we are being economically choked right now uh, by a tunnel system that is already failing. There are equipment fail failures already. Talk to New Jersey commuters and you hear stories about the disruptions that are being caused in their lives, uh, disruptions to their families, disruptions to their work, uh, disruptions to their productivity. Uh, should we not build this, uh, I use, uh, you know, we would have a traffic congestion Armageddon in this region uh, should one of these tunnels uh, go down. And what he says about the salt water, I went through the tunnels in one of these glass cars where I could literally see the erosion, uh, see the damage, um, and it is the height of irresponsibility when you know if we, that if you invest in infrastructure, period, in this region, you produce a 100% return on your dollar, better than anybody in Wall Street's getting these days. Right. Um, um, to not do that would not... Except for Fred. Except right. for Fred. <clears throat> Fred, yes. <laughs> uh, um, but, the, but the reality is, if we do not do this, uh, we, will, we will drain this productive region, one of the most productive regions on the globe, the greater Newark, New Jersey region. So, there, was a, there was a 20-year <clears throat> timeline probably for these tunnels before Sandy, and now it's 10. Right. And if you take into account the time it takes to plan to get an EIS statement done and then build the tunnels, um, we're right up against the deadline. If we waste another two years and do nothing, um, we're just looking for trouble. So, Senator Schumer, you mentioned the importance of educating um, not only people in this region but across the country. Given uh, the gridlock at all levels of government in, in many ways between the two parties and in particular in Congress right now, um, what is the support nationwide? How d is, do you have good support for this project in the, both the Senate and in um, well, House. we're busy building support. You know, the realization that we have such a short timeline is just sinking in here in New York, and it hasn't really sunk in in the whole country. But we do have a general view that this kind of infrastructure investment is needed. Here's something interesting that could help us fund the tunnels. Um, we were able to push hard, and the House has done this in the Senate, and Corey's done a great job on the Senate uh, Commerce Committee on this. But we were able to push through a provision, Amtrak, which could help fund, it desperately needs the tunnels. There's going to be no Amtrak route from Boston to Washington if the tunnels are gone. Um, but Amtrak uh, is making tremendous money in the Northeast Corridor. They make close to $500 million a year. It's so successful. Two-thirds of all those who don't travel by car from Boston to Washington and in between use train, not plane now. And um, if you took that money and used it, the profits that they make on the Northeast Corridor, and sent, instead of sending it to, say, a route from Wyoming uh, to South Dakota, which we now do, which has to be heavily subsidized, but took the profit that Amtrak makes on the Northeast Corridor and use it for capital construction, primarily the tunnel in the Northeast Corridor, you'd have a large revenue stream year after year. Our Republican friends, who are generally not friendly to transportation money, you see what's happening with the highway bill right now, <clears throat> but they agree with that. And it's in the House transportation bill, and I believe it's in the Senate transportation bill as well. So that's a ray of hope here that we could, now we'd have to find other funding sources, obviously, and we're working on those. We're not going to get into the details of where. But there is some degree of acknowledgement and support, and it will grow because it affects the whole Northeast region that has Democratic and Republican senators alike. So without getting into the details, um, uh, the proposal that's sitting on the table for funding this is 50 percent from the feds and 25 percent from each of the states. Um, are there other models? Is that the best model in your mind? Are there other models? And if, if so, what other sources of money are potentially there from the private sector and public-private partnerships and that type of thing? Can you speak to that, Senator Booker? Well, a few things. One is <clears throat> the, there are a lot of different moving parts and a lot of different players on this. So what, what, and I really commend the leadership of, of Senator Schumer. Um, and I want to also commend the leadership of, of two senators who are not here, Senator Gillibrand and Senator Menendez. The four of us have been in lockstep uh, as we've pushed very hard to pull everybody together. 
And so thanks to Senator Schumer's leadership and others, we've gotten you know, the Secretary of Transportation, uh, the Governor Christie, Governor Cuomo, to get the conversations going so we can begin uh, to put the framework of what this project is going to be, uh, how we're going to uh, move forward, it, really having those discussions which are happening, uh, I don't know if I'm overstating it, but really happening furiously, I would say, right now, because everybody understands the urgency. And so uh, on every part of this, from the Amtrak folks who are working on identifying sources of funding, uh, again, if the legislation we've put in that allows them to keep more of the money generated here, that's a potential funding, funding source. Um, I've already also introduced some legislation along with that uh, to help with uh, better ways of making loan dollars available that, can, that are more flexible, that can be used in some of those public-private partnerships. Um, there's Port Authority resources, there are other federal dollars. So these conversations are all going on. I don't want to in any way uh, get out ahead of, of them. Um, but I will say that what has encouraged me from, I would say, this summer when I first, on the New Jersey side, had a summit meeting in my office with Senator Menendez, Governor Christie, and other uh, members of that team is just the, the speed and the urgency which which, which, which things are moving. And, and uh, just to toot uh, uh, the senators, Senator Schumer's horn, um, I mean, New York has a, is, is a vast, vast state uh, with a lot of infrastructure transportation needs. Uh, but I really give him a lot of credit for uh, um, getting everybody focused on this and pulling folks together and, and marrying them with the New Jersey side so that we actually are seeing even more momentum. There's one more good federal fund. There are a bunch, and we're looking at them. And as Corey said, we haven't gotten commitments on any of these things at this point. But the program, which is well known called New Starts, is a great program. Because once you get into the New Starts program, there's significant federal money every year. And you don't have to keep fighting for it and fighting for it and fighting for it. So New Starts, for instance, is funding the Second Avenue subway. New Starts is funding the mirror image of the gateway tunnels under the Hudson, which is east side access right. under the East River. And hundreds of millions of dollars come out of this New Starts program almost, not quite, but almost automatically. So one of the things obviously would be great is if New Starts had uh, both the capacity and ability to make this part of their program. And that's one of, so there are possible federal funding sources. There are many other state sources. The Port Authority, as we know, makes a whole lot of money. Now, they have a lot of commitments and other things they have to do. The state, both states are formidable states, but this is a huge amount of money. It's, you know, many estimate that the tunnel and building, we've already made uh, provisions for the box tunnel. In other words, we did get a head start on this, and I got to give credit uh, to both Amtrak and Steve Ross, the developer of um, the Hudson River uh, Yards uh, facility. They, we got, we took some money, I put, wrote Sandy so it could be flexible, and we took some money out of the Sandy money to change where uh, uh, the uh, Hudson Yards buildings were building their foundation to create a box tunnel, a one block long box tunnel, you may have seen the article in the New York Times, which is going to allow us to build. So <clears throat> there, are, there are different sources of money, but it's probably if you count everything including the Kearney Secaucus uh, bridge that was probably have to be rebuilt. The portal bridge. The portal bridge, which, you know, may not have to be built as quickly as the tunnel, but pretty quickly. It ends up being a, about a $20 billion project, give or take a few billion. So, uh, well, we are, we're working well with Governor Christie, and uh, what happened in the past happened in the past. The, um, you know, one of the, uh, as a person long involved in, uh, and, and we won't go in that direction at the moment, but the, the uh, uh, as a person long involved in uh, the New Jersey side of things and in the region, one of the things that I think is really important that comes out of this is New York and New Jersey working together in partnership in a way that, frankly, has right. is, is not been as robust in previous years. Um, and this project is, as, as important as it is to focus on, it only really focuses on maintaining what we have in place. Correct. The question is, how do we move toward the point of expanding capacity? What are the elements of that? How do we get to that kind of a conversation about expanding capacity? Well, we have a real problem in our country with infrastructure, period. We've, we've built up about a $3 trillion infrastructure debt. We're the, we're a, a, we are the grandchildren who inherited this incredible home from our grandparents uh, and trashed it 
and are going to pass it on to our kids with this horrendous uh, infrastructure deficit. It's, it's unacceptable to have a nation wh which had a ranked infrastructure as the number one on the globe and now be somewhere, depending on whose measure you do, between 12 and 18. Uh, and, and, th and this is a self-inflicted wound because, again, we know dollar invested produces 100 percent return on economic growth. Uh, and in regions like this, we have a state center in New Jersey that did a uh, analysis for every dollar invested, saw that three dollars in our region uh, come back. And when you talk about trying to expand capacity, please understand, you, talk, you mentioned the Portal Bridge. That is the busiest bridge for rail traffic in the Western Hemisphere. And it is structurally uh, considered deficient now. Um, um, uh, it is 150 years old. And engineers uh, uh, give reports that make you wonder why it's still standing. And we failed to invest in that. And that shows the, 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 the height of irresponsibility. And so this is difficult, and, and we has, have a come up as, as a nation. Um, I talked to the Secretary of Transportation when he was up with me in New Jersey, and he was saying to me, telling me stories about companies in the Northeast that use new, uh, Canadian ports because of the efficiency of Canadian ports compared to the inefficiency of American ports. Mm -hmm. and, and so at a time that other countries when they're talking about infrastructure improvements, they're looking at broadband access and the electrical grid and doing incredible things right. that are speeding, fueling their economy. America is being dragged down by this economy. And so we had this wonderful moment in caucus uh, yesterday. Uh, Senator Schumer runs our caucuses on, um, on Thursdays, and we were told we had Jack Lew in. And this was a powerful moment for me. Again, I haven't even been in the Senate for two years. And uh, we're talking about the ridiculousness, the utter ridiculousness that we are not already raising the debt ceiling. The impact it is already having on interest rates, another self-inflicted wound. And the Secretary Liu talks about, well, you know, the Chamber of Commerce and other people are coming in. And then, and then uh, Senator Brown, Sherrod Brown yells, these folks will always come into these private meetings and tell us that they're in favor of running the debt, raising the debt ceiling, in favor of investing uh, uh, in infrastructure, all of these things, but they won't go out and talk about them publicly and begin to put pressure. If you are a fiscal conservative that, that, that just does a balance sheet analysis of what we should be doing with our tax dollars, and you're not investing in medical research, you're not investing in infrastructure, you're not doing common sense things like raising the debt ceiling, then you're hurting our country. And that's the problem, is we've gotten to a point in America where if we were the, if the Congress was the board of directors of America Inc., we would all be liable for shareholder lawsuits because we're doing such stupid things uh, with, with taxpayer dollars. Right. It's true. Well said. And just to, and what Corey says, just to give you on the transportation front, which shows this isn't going to be easy, there's a good number, particularly the hard right on the Republican side in the House who actually believe that the federal government should not fund any highways, that there should be no federal funding in a highway trust fund. Now, we've been doing, the federal government's been building highways since 1820. That was when they didn't have Republicans then. <laughs> but they had the Whigs. The Whigs were the predecessor party. And Henry Clay, the we, leader... We need the Whigs back. Uh, yes. And, uh, and, <laughs> that's right. He needs the Whigs. And, and, that's and, why I'm voting for Trump. Right. And, <laughs> <laughs> a, hair, a, a new hair piece for everyone? Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, the Whigs... Uh, Henry Clay, the leader of the Whigs, proposed something called <laughs> internal improvements. Those were building highways over the Appalachian Mountains to connect what was then America to the far west, Kentucky, Ohio, Tennessee. So it's been a, a grand and long tradition and these guys just want to pull the rug out from under it. So anyone who thinks this is going to be easy at the state and state levels, just because it's such a large amount of money, and at the federal level, because we have these ideologues who have turned the world upside down, uh, is mistaken. This is going to be a really hard job. But it is, I would say to all of you who are so civically concerned, it's worth the effort because the choice is really disaster. And I, and I don't think we should lose sight of the importance of using what we do here as a model for how the process could work and how we could get everybody together. Um, and, in, and in light of that, and I know we're, we're, we, we got started a little bit late, but we're going to honor uh, Senator Schumer's need to um, depart here promptly at 315. But if you could, talk a little bit about um, 
what are the next steps? We know that NJ Transit is going to act as the lead for the yes. EIS for the project. Um, so what are the immediate next steps? And then sure. importantly, how can people in this room, as well as the broader general public, help in this process, uh, knowing that it is an education process? Right. Okay. Uh, first, some of the next steps are beginning. We're not waiting to have everything in place okay. before we start. We just can't afford to. And so, as you mentioned, EIS is being done by New Jersey Transit, aided uh, by Amtrak. And Amtrak, which is way out front, and you've got to give Amtrak a lot of credit, Tony Kosher Tony and Kosher, others. Exactly. When we did this box tunnel, it was Tony Kosher who originally called me up and sounded the alarm. He, they're on top of this because it's their lifeblood, and they've been great. But in any case, they are spending about $300 million to start doing the engineering studies and all of those things that take a while. So there is progress actually being made while we figure it out. But what we have to figure out is obviously funding sources. We talked about that most of, the, most of this period. Um, that's a huge, huge problem. Uh, we're going to have to come up with it. We can see certain pathways, as we mentioned earlier. But that's number one. And then we have to figure out there are so many moving parts here. There is the federal government. There is Amtrak, which is part of the federal government, but an independent part with its own independent board. There's the state governments. There are the local governments. There's the Port Authority, which again is part of the two states, but a separate and independent board. But if one piece of this puzzle is not working with the others, Right. The whole thing won't happen, given how urgent our timeline is. So the first step in what I've tried to do in the speeches I've given and everything else is to just bring people together and try to bring everybody together so we can start talking and creating a mechanism where we can work together. Senator? Look, I, I, I don't want to say anything except for I have confidence, and, and um, I've seen this momentum, as I said, over the, over the coming months. But I, I also see how the public outrage, and on the New Jersey side, we really saw yep. uh, over the coming last number of months, and a public outrage like I've never seen, cutting across partisan lines um, as New Jersey Transit riders and, and Amtrak riders and were seeing delays, delays right, that were, right. um, and, and it, it so cut everything. I, 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 you know, on social media a lot, and was just bombarded uh, on Twitter and uh, Facebook and Instagram by, by New Jersey transit riders who were just fed up. And so that's what I just hope that we see more of is this volume being turned up. Um, this is not gonna happen tomorrow, but I'm, I'm very confident that we're gonna get momentum or that one day I'm gonna wake up in the morning to a frantic call from Schumer telling me to grab a, sho a shovel. <laughs> we've gotta start digging. <laughs> we're gonna start digging But you have a track ourselves. record of grabbing shovels and, yeah. Yeah. and other yeah. sort of things, so uh, uh, we may take in that In Washington, that's, we're grabbing a lot of shovels, shovels. these <laughs> days. <Yeah. laughs> uh, uh, um, for, for different you, reasons. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> shoveling right. out. Yeah. Exactly. Not shoveling in. Right. Yes. And, and I do want to say that, that, that New Yorkers should feel very proud because um, I do believe that Senator Schumer will be the, not just the Democratic leader, but he will be the leader of the Senate um, and has a very pragmatic way about him that brings people together left and right. Uh, he's a great deal maker. And knowing that he will be ascending at a point that this is important, I think well, that and this me, is going to get Let me repay the compliment. Corey, he's new in the Senate, but he has a whole lot of experience, and he's just been invaluable here. And as I said, unless we have a hand ac hands across the Hudson and we're working together, it is not going to work. And he's, he's an invaluable partner in and, this. And, We're going to do it together. And let me, um, before, before, before Fred cuts us all off, let me add one, let me add one thing, if I may. Oh. Okay. Um, uh, I don't want to underscore, I mean, I, I want to underscore, I'm sorry, the, the importance of um, whatever you feel about the past and how we got to where we are today, the important thing is we've got some leadership of the two senators and the two governors working together. And, and to underscore the absolute critical nature of everybody continuing to work together. Because if, as the senator uh, just mentioned, Senator Schumer mentioned, if one piece of the puzzle falls off here, we have a problem. So we really need to get everybody together. And the leadership both of you have shown in this, I think, Thank is you. terrific. So we Thank really you. appreciate it. Thank Fred? You. Before, something near and dear to our hearts, I, if, and I know both of you have to run, if I could just get a very quick response from, from Corey and, and from our new Democrats. You have two of the most okay. direct talking. Penn Station. Yes. Penn Station. Uh, uh, can, can Moynihan Station. About, about what, what, what can be done to, to, to move that forward? 
Yeah, that's another one we're making some progress on. We're finding a variety of sources of money. Some are, uh, some are New York State, some are federal, and some are private public air rights. And we're getting closer. We actually are getting closer there. Uh, I've been working with the gov our governor, Governor Cuomo's office. This is more a New York project than a New Jersey project. And that's part project. of that piece about it's, it's not just about maintaining, it's about expanding capacity. Yes, that we one, need we're gonna, capacity to And expand. we are going to expand, expand capacity there. Yes. Without any question, we need a new Penn Station. But we're getting a lot closer. Getting the funding sources, which is close to a billion dollars, we're getting close. Thank you. Um, and I'll just say that the original Penn Station, the Newark Penn Station, um, uh, <laughs> um, I just want you to know that, that, I know you worry about this, but the status is very good, and we are, we are making a lot of progress on Newark Penn Station. That's right. Um, yes. Thank you. Thank Bravo. you, Senator Booker. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.